Well, the Flatsome theme is great for e-commerce, but is it great for blogging? Because we have a few and a whole bunch of options, but is it really good? Well, in this episode on Sikalofia Academy, we're going to tackle just that, how to do blogs and blog stuff on Flatsome. Creating a blog on Flatsome is well, exactly the same thing as doing it on WordPress. We simply create a page called blog. And we go to our settings, not our flatsome settings, but our page settings, reading, and set the posts page to the page that we just created. And then if we refresh this blank page, it's going to be our blog page. On the flip side, if you want the blog page to be the home page, simply go to reading and change the front page displays to your latest posts and save. It's that simple. So the question is, what actual options do we have here in Flatsum for the blog page? Sadly, not many. There's, it's kind of, well, there's not really much here. Uh, we can choose for the general blog layout. So that's on the blog landing page, the page that lists all your blogs. We can say if we're going to sidebar on the right or the left or no sidebar. Some people, of course, like no sidebar. My personal preference, just so you know, is on the right sidebar so that you can still put some marketing material here, call to actions, posts, social media stuff. That's a really good idea. Here, you can change whether you want normal, which is sort of like the list style, but I'll talk about that in a second. Normal list or Pinterest style. And if you have a graphic design oriented or image photography design style blog, or at least that's your content, Pinterest style might work really well. For the rest of us, mostly normal or list style is what you're looking for. Normal is what you see right here, sorry, right here, just regular old list, you know, the usual way we see blogs. The list style is more of just an actual list of stuff. Uh, generally, we'll probably want to stick with um, blog list style for normal. The blog homepage header and the HTML after blog post sections are a little bit interesting. Here in the blog homepage header, we can add content right in front of our well content. I did some tests right before to make sure I got it right for you guys. So it'll add it right here. Th though you might be thinking, well, would this add it right after all my posts here? No. The HTML after blog posts, that goes into the single post right down here. So let me show you exactly how that works. So let me add foo bar before blog header. And then uh, I am great after blog posts. So let me show you exactly how this works, because it is a little bit confusing. The uh, before blog header stuff that adds its r stuff right here up in front, the HTML after blog post that does not added after on the blog page, but it will add on single posts. So let's refresh this page. My header still shows up because that's before blog. And here it is the I am great after blog posts, it shows up right there, right before the comments, but after the previous and next links and the bio and all that fun stuff. So that's where those two go. The good part is we can add any and all content we want, HTML, short codes, and images, and all that st fun stuff. So we can add all that great stuff, and it can be used as another call to action, or another bio box, or maybe a fun call to action to sign up to your newsletter, links to other great stuff, and add. That's what can go there. The blog single post layout is similar to what we had over here for the blog list layout, but for the single post instead. So just like the other one, left sidebar, right sidebar, and no sidebar. I highly recommend doing this. If you're going to choose a sidebar, keep if you're going to use the left sidebar on the blog page, keep the left sidebar on the single post. If you're going to use the right sidebar on the blog list, use the right sidebar on the single post. The blog single post header style is very simple. You can have the default stuff, which is well this. So let's jump into a regular post that's right here. That's what it is. Here's our regular old header. The big header style, big featured image is if we have a featured image, I don't remember if I added a featured image here, it will be, there it is. Yeah, there's our featured image, big right up there. Not everybody likes this style. Um, actually, I usually don't. Um, so I usually have this on here if I'm using flat sum. 
to have it nice and simple and normal. That's what I usually prefer. But if you want the image right up there, that's what that option does. The show author bio box and the enable share icons are kind of self-explanatory, but let me show you just in case. The bio box is what we have right over here. I didn't add anything in, in this particular demo website, but you, the information you write about you or whatever the author writes about themselves here would go here. That's what that is. You could disable this. You could also disable the share icons. That stuff is this stuff right here. So you can have either of these enabled or disabled. The parallax effect is probably honestly the most confusing section and button out of here because if for the single blog post we select big featured image and save that and not enable parallax effect. So here I have this. Let me just refresh to show you just in case. See, it's still parallaxing. The big featured image is still doing the parallax thing. So let's enable parallax effect and disable the big featured image. We'll get our normal featured image, right? But that's also now in parallax, which is, like I said, really, really weird. I'd, in this particular case, I think it's kind of weird. Some people will like it if you're using different featured images here, of course, you know, it might be better for you. I don't think it works well here, especially in Chrome, because Chrome doesn't scroll that smoothly as opposed to Firefox. So I really don't recommend using this one, but that's what it does. If you're using the big featured image, this option has zero effect. With the default options in Flatsum, we are sort of limited in what we can do. But in the next video, and especially for students of the Flatsum course, we'll go through how to customize everything from customizing the title options to the title style, stuff we see here, how to customize how the featured image shows up, how to customize the social media sections so they can actually follow you instead of just liking the page. This stuff here, how do we change this layout, which is, in my opinion, a little bit annoying and how we can get better comments throughout all of this stuff. So stay tuned for the next video, and especially this is going to be in the Flatsum uh, video series and the Scalafia Academy. So be sure to wait for that. It'll be in the link once I have that ready. But there's a lot we, we can do here, um, and there's a lot that needs to be customized. But in Flatsum, remember, we have these options here, and starting out, it's okay to start with what you got, because you can make stuff like this. You can add just this styling stuff, by the way, is nothing special. There's no real special options on how to get posts like this. We'll go through that in the next series of videos and especially in the Academy for the Flatsum course. But making posts in Flatsum works. It is pretty simple. I kind of wish, though, that they use darker colors for most of the text. Like I changed it over here for me. I kind of like the darker color. I think what they have by default is too light. Um, but other than that, blogging with the Flatsum stuff works. Things that I do wish were different, um, well, actually, first, the things that I think are right. We do have the regular editor here, which is awesome. We can use the text editor or the visual editor. That's nothing unusual. But we can also use the Flatsum page builder, which is pretty awesome. So if you want to build some more complicated posts, I highly recommend you use the page builder because they've made lots of good changes to this thing lately, and it really is cool. So you can use that. But the stuff I wish they added or changed is the, well, the post styles and different themes, um, especially some of the more businessy-ish oriented, more blogging, entrepreneur oriented themes. You can change what kind of post style this is. And that would change how this is displayed here on the main, on the blog single page and on the blog list page. For example, what if I just want to post a motivational quote? I'd want it some quotes over here or a motivational quote image, then I'd just want the image up here and the title below. That's what I kind of like, you know, to change around on these things. Sadly, we don't have those options in Flatsum. So that's the big minus. But other than that, blogging works in this thing. It looks pretty decent with a few small changes. Uh, for example, the color. I know I keep hitting that on, on, on that over and over. But if, with a few small changes, I think this is a phenomenal blogging platform and it works really well. So that's the quick overview of blogging in Flatsum and the options. I hope you like it too. If you have any questions about the changes that you can make here and how it all works, drop me a line in the comments and I'll see if I can answer them. So good luck with blogging, have fun with Flatsum and be sure to ask questions.